The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom and Charles. And Dom, I've got a bit of a confession. What's your confession? You know how when people get uber famous and celebrities, you know, like, like us. Like us, yeah, yeah. Their vices come to the fore. Oh, and, it does happen, you know, doesn't it? They get caught doing lots of drugs or, you know, harassing tons of women. Is this a precursor to saying that the tabloids are onto you for at last? Well, they probably will be after I expose myself. I mean, you know, not, not like that, but like what, what, thank, I, I confess. Thank what God I, it's an audio medium. What, <laughs> what I did. Uh, at the end of last week. Uh, so, stick around. Normally, this is a topical podcast looking at the day's news. Charles is claiming that what he's, what he's going to tell us would make the news uh, if it weren't published here first. So, <laughs> so right. we're actually making news before it appears in the news oh, yes. at this point. So, my confession is that on my birthday, which yeah. is last week. Happy happy 60th. I wanted to make a bolognese for the family. Um, so your birthday present to yourself was making spaghetti bolognese for the family. We didn't have any mincemeat. Well, we had mincemeat, but it was over the use by date. So I chucked it out. Mm. And I could not be bothered uh, walking down to the local IGA, which is literally not very far away. Yeah, about a 10-minute walk from your place, isn't it? So I downloaded the Milk Run app. Oh, yes. And I decided to – and I know it's been bought by Woolies. I know it's completely, like, dealing with the e- the most evil corporation in Australia, except for all the other ones. Tell us it's not run by Qantas. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. and, and I tried Milk Run. And can I tell you, it is possibly – the worst service I have ever encountered across any capitalist system ever in the history of, like, I'm 48 now, and it is by far the worst thing. So I used Milk Run quite a bit during the pandemic, as many of us did. Unfortunately, the people who started Milk Run um, felt during the course of the pandemic, when everyone wanted to stay at home and was desperate to to get things delivered, like rapid antigen tests, Mm. they mistook that for a genuine business model going forward. And so it it all went under. And Mm. they also, you know the other problem with milk runners that they insisted on paying their staff proper wages. They actually had salaried staff. Well, I'm sure Woolies have fixed that problem. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I, I, when I see things being brought by Uber drivers um, mm, yeah. under their model, yeah, you know that that's not the case anymore. So, yeah, so milk run used to be quite good in a way that made it impossible for it to make any money or survive. Mm. But then in, in its dying moments, uh, just when you thought they were closed forever, they sold the brand probably for 10 cents to Woolies, yes. who rebranded their Metro 60 service as Milk Run, mm. and then suddenly the app turned from green to, to blue, mm. and there we go. I mean, I've got a one-year-old, so mm. I, I do occasionally use that that kind of mm. service. Well, let me tell you let me tell you how this worked. So it was 4.30 on a Thursday afternoon. Yeah, and off peak. I placed an order for 500 grams of mince meat and, I don't know, some chocolate and some chips and stuff like that to get it up to 20 bucks, right? Yeah. Never done it before, so I just thought, oh, well, you know, we'll see how it goes. And it was great. It said, Oh, it'll be there in 27 minutes or something. It was going to be like 5.03 p.m. Right? Isn't it good where so, it gives you like a specific number, like not yeah. about 20. It's yeah. exactly 27. It gives you confidence. So then cooking, 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 and then I realised, oh, actually, I need a few other ingredients. Oh, I won't reorder from Milk Run. So I did actually walk down to the shops. Anyway. Right? Anyway, right. My wife calls me. So I'm taking a bit of time at the shops, and my wife calls me, and she said, Look, it was, this is about 5.30 at this point. You know what? Um, the milk run guy still hasn't arrived. Do you want to just pick up some mints anyway? So I did. So made the nice bolognese and everything like that. Pretty much forgot about milk run. Mm. It was about 8.30 that night <laughs> that I went, hang on, the milk run still, like, still have the mince meat. Like, like you know, like, I can use it on something else later on. But, you know, like, so ring up milk run. And, and at this point, it, it, it's gone, oh, it will be here in 27 minutes, which is now... 9.04 p.m. or whatever. You know, like it just kept on creeping up by 27 minutes oh, every 27 time. minutes. Okay, yeah. And so I ring up the milk run people and go, this is sort of a bit crazy. And then they go, oh, yeah, we'll look into it and everything like that. And it's a long phone call. And then eventually they go, oh, yeah, so it turns out that what has happened is that nobody has picked up your bag, right? And I go, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, you're right. Like I, that is what I just explained. To you. Anyway, so but that makes me a little bit suspicious because it's like, well, hang on, does that mean that it's been there since 4.30 and nobody has picked up my bag means that it's just been
been sitting there since 4.30. So eventually about maybe 10 p.m. And so they go, we're terribly sorry. I'll tell you what, um, we'll give you a $15 voucher for your next um In the unlikely run. event you want to order yeah. something else. And I and I said, all right, so you think that I'm going to you know use this service ever again? And the guy laughed. <laughs> At that point, he went, yeah, well, yeah, fair point. whatever. Yeah. Happy birthday, by and the way. But I didn't really care because it was like, well, at least I'll get my fucking mince meat eventually. So then I arrive, it, it arrives. This is like, it's after 10 and, it, you know, the chocolate was fine. The mince meat is warm. Like it's been sitting there for five, like I can't use five hour room temperature mince meat. Could, would you? Well, I mean, it depends if you want to survive. I mean, yeah, if, no, if yeah. you wanted to have a, a, I love speedy bolognese, one of my favourite things. Hmm. I could imagine if I wanted to end it all. Yes. Um, it's a great way to go. Mince meat that's been out for a, a very yes. long time on it. Particularly it was very hot last week. It was very hot. Yeah, it was. So, a, it was. I would describe it as tepid mince meat. Yeah. So and it, and it also had it had started to brown. Wow. Yeah. So like a, a delicious petri dish <laughs> of, of, of of air warmed yeah. mints. But you know the strange thing because I by there it, it was my birthday night. Like I had had probably too much to drink by then, right? But I, so I threw the mince meat in the fridge, and it was only the next morning that I looked at it and went, "Yeah, no, nah, that's uh, that's going straight in the bin." But uh, yeah, so there you go. So so the point is, not only is milk run like evil to to use but it it doesn't work like 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 it just doesn't work the funny so, thing about this charles that yeah. i know because i've used this service as i say because i have tiny children mm. it's quite often the case that you know so you want it, nappies at the last minute or something yeah so if you're wanting nappies in five hours time yeah, you obviously <laughs> don't get something fresh but i know how it works and the way that it works is that they get a bunch of they've got a whole army of minions because they're woolies oh yeah they've got a sort of low paid minions mm. the minions go and pick stuff off the shelves and put them in a bag. Mm. Then it sits in a refrigerated spot. Oh. I've actually got fridges in Woolies supermarkets now. You'll see them near the entrance where the drivers come and get the stuff. If it's got cold stuff, there's usually a, a bag that's cold and a bag that's warm or whatever, like a room temperature bag. And so how you're, it must have taken a particular degree of negligence mm. for your mincemeat to be out in the air because they do actually have fridges for that purpose. Mm. And But it would have travelled on the back of the, I don't know, the bikers, the the. the the bike oh, or the so maybe it car was just or whatever. Stuck it's in possible somebody's. that it was so hot that yes. it just managed to cook on the way <laughs> from Woolies to you. But no, so the great thing about Milk Run, Charles, is mm. that you would have paid a lot more oh, yeah. than regular mints for that to be brought to you. Yes, it's it's yes. fantastically expensive. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, uh, it was it was expensive. It was warm. It was unusable. Um, that. That uh, uh, that's and look, that's my confession because you know, like everyone goes through vices, and and mine was that I submitted to buying from the Colesworth duopoly, and I know that they're evil. I know that essentially, but what do you do? What what can you do when you? I mean, this is, the, this is the genius of the gig economy mm. is that it's got to the point where um, there's absolutely no winners. I don't know if you've looked at the prices on like Uber Eats or whatever recently, but because all the competitors have gone bankrupt, mm. like Deliveroo and what the other ones, there are about five, five or six of them at one point, mm. and they're just all gone. I can't remember the names of all of them now, but there were, there were at least five or six different. Well, there's Menu delivery. Log that's still exists. Menu Log DoorDash. Exists. DoorDash. But there were three or yeah. four other ones. There was that posh one. Uh, Provador or something. Yeah, there are a whole bunch of yeah. them. And what's happened is that they've been slowly forced to pay more wages, oh. partly because you remember oh, there was that see, period blame, when all the all the Uber drivers got killed and so, I blame Alba. All the delivery drivers got killed. Yeah, yes. so what's happened is a Labor government has been elected. Coming in, enforcing s- Labor standards. So, uh, oh, Charles, God. I yes. presume that there aren't actually Labor standards. Like, I presume that they're not getting actually paid by the hour, right? Yeah, I yeah. assume that it's getting a no, little bit more. They wouldn't do that. Because what they've done now is that mm. there's very time you do that, there's a delivery fee, but there's also a service fee. Oh, now, you might say, right. well, surely their service is delivering things. That's what their service is. Mm. But they've ma- basically made it twice as expensive in terms of the fee side of it. Mm. So it's incredibly, so it's a vicious circle because no one ever uses it. So they charge more fees. Yes. So that every time you use it, basically it's... So they've adopted the ticket tech model. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> what they've managed to do, and full credit to them, is uh, we know all businesses go digital. Mm. They've managed to figure out um, a way to... Um, to combine the, the poor range, the shitty quality, mm. and the vastly expensive prices of convenience stores. So it used to yes. be you'd be, you're ordering from a supermarket. Mm. Now you're ordering from a, it feels like ordering from a convenience store yes. with all the randomness of, like, I swear most times I go into a convenience store, the guy just makes up a price. Yes. And, and then doubles it. Well, the convenience store that we're near where we live, I actually said to the guy once, why don't you just put prices? Like, it just feels really dodgy. 
the way there are no prices on any products. Because he gets really, because I often go to the counter and say, how much is this? That's a tough question at a convenience store. Yeah, and he sort of gets really annoyed having to scan in something. And I go, I don't want that. And he'll go, well, you've got to put it back. And it's like, why do I have to put it back? Like, how else? Like, like, isn't that your job because you made it so inconvenient to find out the price? for him because you could have put it back. (laughs) I don't know. Charles, I mean, we're just I, sitting here railing a, against people who I don't got, earn very much money. I got into a real argument with the guy because I just saw it, I, because I was trying to explain to him. Like, it just feels really dodgy, the fact that you just, like, you don't tell us your price. And it's at this point I want to pay credit yeah. to 7-Eleven, where you can always see just how mm. much you're getting stung for before you pay. Yes. Like, they're very upfront about, yeah, yes. this is $20. We know it should cost 2 Yes. But at least you know what it is. The Chaser Report. News you know you can't trust. You know, the the strange thing about Japan, and I've said this before on the podcast, is that they actually charge low prices at convenience stores. They're on every corner, Mm. and the prices are low. Now, I presume that's because the wage is $2 an hour or something. Mm. But you do use them. I wonder if convenience stores have ever thought, perhaps if we we charge non-insane prices, Mm. people would actually buy more things from us. Well, it's interesting because here in New South Wales, uh, OTR is about to take over all the Coles Express convenience stores. Oh, what's OTR? OTR is a South Australian-based convenience store chain, and their innovation is to have a look at whatever 7-Eleven charges Mm. and I think quadruple the price. Oh, that's pretty good. Yes. So the stereotype was always it's worth 7, you pay 11. Yeah. So at OTR you're paying 44, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, like a, I'm pretty sure Cornet- seven forty four Cornettos are like nine dollars. Amazing, it wouldn't be double figures. Yeah, I know bargain. Should get should buy one off Milk Run. This has been <laughs> the most middle aged dad conversation we've <laughs> okay. ever had on the yeah. podcast. Okay. Um, that said, we, if we, you we, relate, we, please give us a five star review and and just mention it or email podcast at chaser dot com today. You because mm. I mean we are old and lazy. We want people to bring us shit. We don't want to have to leave the house. We want things to be brought to us for a reasonable. Massive surcharge, like no, but I don't think I do. I think I, I think I'm burnt. I think that's it. That's no, we've it stopped. Me we, we've for basically delivery. stopped yeah. on, on Uber. We did so much Uber Eats and all that during the pandemic, mm. and we've now just it, we can't do it because it's well, what always I, cold. What I did is I uh, invested in a backpack, and I whenever my wife wants to get Uber Eats because she still likes doing that sort of thing, mm. uh, I go, oh well, I'll go and get the food. Yeah, and so and, I just, and you get to charge a delivery fee and a service. I fee. just go out on my bike, and it's always much quicker. It's incredibly, like, because the thing that you don't realise about Uber Eats is, or I didn't know, was like the restaurants themselves have completely different prices on their Uber Eats menu than what you'd get if you just turn up and say, I want yeah, to do some absolutely. takeaways. No, that's right. Yeah. yeah, no, it's true. Everyone should, I know, I've studied this in great detail. Oh, right. The prices from the actual restaurant are jacked up even mm. before you have the delivery fee and the service fee and the fee fee and the extra fee. Mm, that's right. right. Yeah. Turning up, particularly if you say yeah. you're just paying cash or whatever, yeah. they're so glad to have someone walking through the door mm. through the door. who's not a fucking Uber rider mm. that they'll probably give you a discount. Yes. So, um, so, 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 so that's, what I should, that's what I should have done with my mince meat. Well, there's a, there's a good business there, Get Charles. on my bike. You know what you could do? Mm. You could potentially offer just to nearby neighbours, yes. but if they need something from the shop, that I'll get on my bike. pop up on your bike and get it. And because I've got them a backpack. Yeah. you got you got this, Is it a reflective backpack? Big, big, hot backpack, you know, keeps things warm? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do that. Um, then what you'll find, Charles, is that as you as you build your business, mm. you can charge uh, a giant surcharge. Just yes. don't lie to them about what the prices are. Yes. And you know the other thing Uber Eats does, of course. And I should do that with drugs. Yeah, you should. Yes. You know that Uber when they say it's twenty dollars for a pizza or whatever, hmm. they're not giving the restaurant twenty dollars. They're giving them like twelve. Oh, so what I do is I also just go, go and underpay yeah. for everything. So you, are, so you, pay, you I should you, do that now. I should you do, chisel the restaurant. Yes, you chisel the customer, and I should do that to my wife. I should say, yes. you know, oh yeah, this whole meal costs fifty bucks. But I'm thinking of, for and instance, then just pocket the the other thirty. When my wife says to me, "Can you bring me a cup of tea?" Yeah. Previously, I've been thinking that as a chance to show affection. No, it's it's now it's a chance, mate. Money. It's for a margin. Yes. Yeah, it's for, it's for a marker. I love this. Okay. Yes, and same with the kids. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, like they're so used to getting their bolognese for free. Well, so if, if they want $10 for something, mm. what's the service fee? <laughs> <laughs> and the delivery fee. Well, I should start charging money on their pocket money. You should. Yes. There should be a percentage. Yes. A handle, I mean, that's what Apple Handling will do on Apple Pay. Six ninety five Of the $10. Of the $10. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. By the way, this podcast, it's going to cost you to listen to from now on. Um, yeah. There's a podcast. Podcast delivery fee, there's a service fee. In in addition to 
the like the premium fee. Actually, we shouldn't even mention that because the premium. Do we have any premium listeners left? At this oh, do, point? Uh, do they? Do we? No, it's I'm a premium value. subscriber. It's only four dollars a month. Come on, that's nothing. We put it down to a level where a you could just subscribe out of sheer pity, and that b people wouldn't complain as much yeah. as they did when it was. We're, $10 we're going a month. for the the pity payment. <laughs> the, pity, the pity payment. Yeah. yeah, it's not Patreon. It's pity on. You know, because um, the chaser runs on a sort of pity model, right? Sure. But the shot, which is the other publication that we do, hmm. runs on a be really good at what you do model. And I'll tell you what, it's making fucking shit tons of money. Why, why didn't you do that for the chaser? Like we keep on being able to get more writers and stuff and plough all the donations back into making it work because people write these cracker articles and everyone decides that they want to subscribe. Why do you still have the chaser then? Shouldn't we just shut this thing down? <laughs> Subscribe to our podcast uh, at <laughs> Apple Podcasts or Acast Plus. It's four dollars a month, and frankly, at that price, you're being kind. You know what we should do? We should deliver this podcast by Milk Run. Like we should get yeah. no, or get sponsored by them. Actually, yes. Have we been sponsored? <laughs> I don't think we've been sponsored by Milk Run before, and probably not for a while. I'd no. Say. Yeah. Mm. Oh well. Thank you for making it this far. Um, <laughs> we appreciate it. It it didn't take as long as it took Charles's food to come, or indeed any Uber order that I ever did. What we should do is we should do a podcast where we order something from Milk Run and then we promise to do it for as long as it takes to get um, something. That actually is a good question. I don't know if there's a theoretic, theoretical maximum duration of a podcast. A podcast. Like, can you do a podcast episode that's a week long? Well, we'd have to. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, let's check it out. Thanks for listening, Our Gears from Road. We're part of the Iconoclast Network. And look, let us know if you hear any food serv- service <laughs> d- delivery ads during the course of this podcast because that would be fucking ironic. Yeah.